What is up, beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here, I King Amongst Kings. Thank you for tuning in to my live. Thank you for watching this video right now, if you're able to watch it or if you're gonna see it later on. Um, thank you for tuning in. So today we're just gonna get right into a message that spoke so strongly to me. Um, today when I was you know, reading the word of God, um, I was reading the book of John. And so I just felt really strongly to come on here and just share with you the revelations the Spirit of God has given to me that, you know, really, um, I would say, like, gave me a deeper insight on just some of the things that we try to appropriate and say, you know, well, it's God's timing or we're waiting on God. We're waiting on the Spirit of God. We're waiting for God to do this or to do that. But in truth, it's not we're waiting on God. It's it's our unbelief. It's us believing. And it's not necessarily our unbelief where, you know, we're believing based on nothingness, right? A lot of the times our belief and our faith is based on what people told us, right? What we saw growing up. You know, whether you grew up in a church or whether you uh, grew up in a community that was church oriented, you'll find that a lot of the things that we believe, especially when it comes to God, we associated with how people behaved. We associated with the things that they did, what they said, you know, to keep it a buck. You know, there's a lot of people who, you know, who talk about Jesus and talk about God and, you know, even having... Um, positions as pastors and evangelists and apostle this, apostle that, prophet, uh, prophet this, prophet that. And some of these people, you know, truthfully, Dave, they were never affirmed or never called by the Spirit of God. And if you was to really know what they were doing in their private life, you would, you know, no way would you have even considered this person's interpretation of the Spirit of God. And I know you know, some people have their beliefs on, you know, that, you know, only God can judge. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, everyone's sin. And, um, you know, um, what does people say, you know, that, you know, who are you to judge, et cetera, et cetera. But the truth of the matter is this, right? When you have taken on the noble, beyond noble responsibility of preaching God's word, right? Um, and begin to lead, uh, lead God's people, right? You have now taken on um, a level of responsibility and accountability that, you know, you know, taking judgment from other human beings and being called out by other human beings is not as bad as being called out by the Spirit of God who ultimately is the person people have to answer to when, you know, again, when they take on these responsibilities or you know, these positions for whatever reasons, right? You know, some people do it because of money, right? And this is something that they've been doing since ancient times. You know, one of the things that made the Lord very angry was, you know, they made his father's house, and this is, a, this is according to the word, right? They made his father's house a marketplace, right? So even today, right? Even today when it comes to the church and just religion, right? It's a lot of buying and selling buy this book so here so this do this do that and again it's not even it's not there's nothing wrong with sewing and, and supporting and and you know exchanging within the body of christ there's nothing wrong with that but again it goes back to the intention right why is it why is it that you want to be a preacher why do you want to have a church a church why is it that you want to do what's the reasons behind your desires and so um, you know, you'll find a lot of people, again, are in situations for the wrong reasons. And my point is, is that, you know, at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're, you're, you're confident in judgment when it comes to the Spirit of God, um, when it comes to, you know, your, you know, whatever it is out there that you grew up believing when it comes to the Spirit of God and your identity. I'm just going to move this camera a little bit because I feel like I need to um, adjust this camera to okay this is so much better whatever it is that you believe about the spirit of God you know when it comes to um, 
like I said, growing up, your, your childhood experiences, you know, how people define God, you know, you don't want to take that with you to the grave. You want to make sure as God's creation that you have your own interpretation, your own personal experience with the Spirit of God. So, that, you know, again, you can be comfortable in knowing that you lived your best life according to God's plan for your life, right? And not a lot of people is going to understand what I'm saying. So I think it's important for me to also be, you know, in this specifically in, in all my videos, but in this message tonight, it's important for me to, you know, let the spirit flow and just speak through me because that is the only way that it's going to really, my message and my video is going to reach the people that it needs to reach. So no, discover God for yourself, right? That's, this is what we're starting with this video. Know God for yourself. Um, desire God above all else and he, you know, will reveal himself to you. And, oh, and communicate or commune with you in a way that you were created to commune with God, right? A lot of the times we're trying to do things, um, which we try to emulate or imitate people when it comes to their relationship with God. And it's important for you to discover your own unique path, your own unique language when it comes to the Spirit of God so that, again, no one can come tell you anything about the Spirit of God that you have a strong relationship with. If God wants to talk to you and tell you something, best believe he can and will tell you something and you will know that it comes from the Spirit of God. We are not, again, deceived by people who have their own intentions. And again, it could be people who are truly, you know, have truly been, uh, truly been called, people who truly are who they say they are. But at the end of the day, you know, you, like I said, have your responsibility to maintain, to do, you know, maintain your relationship with the Spirit of God so that, again, you know, whatever it is that they say to you, the Spirit of God should have already affirmed that or have confirmed that or have told you that because it resonates within your spirit. And so again, it goes back to your frame of reference. It goes back to, and when I say a frame of reference, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Because once you are connected to the Spirit of God, you know, you can't go wrong, right? I mean, it doesn't matter all the distractions, all the, you know, all the different interpretations, you know, all the different experiences when it comes to denominations. And, and bodies of religion that reflect or talk about Jesus Christ, but in truth, you know, when you have the Spirit of, of God in you, you're able to discern the deception and the lies that the enemy has intertwined in certain uh, denominations that, you know, again, profess to be followers of Jesus Christ, but in actuality are antichrist and just synagogues of Satan. So, you know, just like in anything that you do, if you're a business person or anybody who, you know, when you when you when you want to know something, you do your due diligence, you do your research, and you make sure all your eyes are dotted, are dotted, and all your T's are crossed. Right? It's no different when it comes to something as important as your salvation, something as important as God's truth for your life. Because outside of God's truth for your life, you're living in oppression. It's oppression. I don't care how free it sounds or how free it looks. If you're living outside of God's truth, right? The word is described as the true law of liberty. And you, you will have to know what that means um, to know what I'm talking about, right? There are certain things that just cannot be explained, right? They need to be experienced. And so a lot of the times we get caught up trying to explain God to people that we have no business trying to explain God to people because God cannot necessarily be explained according to human logic. You cannot rationale the supernatural. And so for myself and many others who have had the beautiful, amazing experience of encountering the Spirit of God in the manner of which we have, we know that, you know, God can't necessarily be defined. Now, he can allow you to have words, you know what I'm saying, to express to individuals whose hearts and mind he has opened for you to, you know, express him to them. You know, in other words, where, you know, he'll call you to people where, you know, he wants you to water and, and plant seeds. But ultimately, it is God who opens the hearts and minds of individuals, of human beings, to see God for who he is. And ultimately permits them to grow in the revelation of, of the Spirit of God. And so at the, end of, at the end of the day, you can have many T.D. Jakes, many Joel Olsteins, many Me's, you understand what I'm saying? And all that in between. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for your relationship with the Spirit of God. You are responsible for your salvation. God, through this covenant that we have through Jesus Christ, we have been given complete responsibility and com uh, complete freedom. Once, of course, we've, we've come into the awareness of this covenant and the mystery that was, as the word talks about, been held up for how many ages and has been revealed at this 
point in time for us to be set free. The captives, physical, spiritual captives, are to be set free. And again, to come into the communion, come into the covenant, come into the grace, come into the rest that the Spirit of God has made available for us in Christ Jesus. It's, it's your responsibility. Once God comes and opens the door, knocks on the door, and opens your heart, you know, it's now up for you to uh, sustain that through your connectivity, through your connection uh, through, uh, with divine. It's through, in other words, your habitual walk with the Lord that you are able to overcome the world. Again, we know that there's grace, we know that there's favor, but it's kind of like if I've given you, if I've laid out a buffet table of good food to eat, right? You know, the love of God, it says, okay, this is how I define or interpret the love of God. The love of God is not gonna force feed you and ram the food down your throat, right? The love of God is not even gonna put a, you know, put a chain on you, right? And, and tie you to the chair and then force feed you to eat. The Lord is gonna welcome you to the buffet. He's gonna welcome you to the feast. It is up to you if you wanna walk in, right? And, and enjoy the good things that the Spirit of God has laid out for you to eat freely, right? This is also another component of grace, right? The grace that God has given, uh, given us, we who were unworthy because of our uh, ancestors, of course, decision to go against the will of God, but as part of the human race who have inherited, you know what I'm saying, just the fallen nature that was again initiated by our ancestors, you know, everything that the Spirit of God does for us, as far as communion with Him, as far as being freed from damnation, as far as eternal life, as far as salvation, as far as life and life more abundantly, um, is, you know, it's grace because, you know, it's grace. It's, it's God's grace, unmerited favor, who said, okay, these people, this rebellious, stiff-necked, disobedient people who have been, you know, rebelling against me from the beginning of time, I'm still going to make a way for them to be restored to life and to walk with me as, as their Heavenly Father and me and them as my children. And that's what we essentially receive in simple terms in, in Christ. And so, um, so if, like I was saying, if God lays out a buffet, a, a buffet, you know, with some food, it's up to you to, to come eat. Now, symbolically, you know, this buffet that I'm talking about is the word of God. Now, there are other buffets out there, right? Other buffets symbolically representing ideologies and philosophies, denominations, religions out there that are professing God and declaring Christ, quote unquote and other gods out there that you also have the choice to, you know, subscribe to and eat from. But ultimately, you know, you, you know, you can't, at least for me, you know, why I speak of the Spirit of God the way that I do, why, I, you know, I talk about God and have been talking about the Spirit of God since I became a born-again believer was because I had a personal experience with God. I received a personal experience and acquaintance with the Spirit of God. And so I, when I speak, I speak from what I see or from what I saw. I speak from what I see, right? As in my spiritual growth. I speak from my experiences. I speak from, you know, the Lord communing with me, speaking to me in the way that he speaks to me. I speak from wisdom. I speak from knowledge, understanding, insight that the Spirit of God has given me. So that is why I'm able to speak you know, again, un unapologetically and uncompromisingly, and I ask God that He also gives me increase my freedom, increase me in, in 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 the awareness of His freedom because it's already there. It's a matter of coming into agreement with what God says as far as who I am and what He's made available to me, so that I may continue to be unapologetic and uncompromising about God's truth, as crazy as it may sound, and as Ill illogical as it may sound. You know, God's truth is God's truth. And the truth of the matter is, not the fact, the truth of the matter is because facts tend to change. Facts tend to change when a new variable is introduced or, you know, some information that was once hidden now becomes unhidden. A fact, you know, something that was once a fact now, you know what I'm saying, it, it changes because, again, a, a new variable or an undiscovered variable has now shifted the definition 
or shifted what was once fact. Truth is truth. Truth remains. It, it's unchanging, right? And so the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the more you become aware of God's freedom for you, excuse me, the more you, the more you become uh, aware of God's love for you, the more you begin to experience God's love in its increasing capacity, the more you will begin to exercise the freedom to be who you are, even in your imperfections, even in the ways that may be judged and condemned by people who have no business or judging or condemning you because the frame of reference to which or of which they judge and condemn, it's full of nothingness. It's full of brokenness. It's full of just Again, projection, people projecting their own issues upon you and are just mad because you, you know, God has lifted your head and he has empowered you that even through your past, even through your sins, you are able to walk with such confidence. And people hate that because what happens is what the enemy has done, you know, is that through sin, he, you know, through sin, right, there is a level of or levels of unworthiness and inferiority and just low levelness that sin uh, develops in a person as far as their mindset, as far as their soul. So what happens is, is that most times you have some people who, you know, who, you know, sin and they're just, you know, you know, crass about it. You know, they really don't care if their sins offend anybody or if it disrespects anyone. And a lot of that you'll see in like pride movements, different pride movements, you know, it's all about me, 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 me. And like I always say, if you are confident about yourself, if you are truly, if you truly believe that you're doing something right, or you know, that whatever it is that you're advocating for or promoting, you know, if you truly believe that you are who you say you are or that whatever it is that you're fighting for is is right and just then there's really nothing that you have to prove to anybody not saying that you shouldn't speak out for injustices and you know wrongdoings or anything that's trying to oppress a person but at the end of the day you know who can oppress you only if you allow it you understand what i'm saying it's kind of like and then once you begin to walk in your freedom, once you begin to master, or should I say hone, you know, the issues that you're dealing with or the insecurities that you're dealing with and begin to, in your own self, begin to deal with the issues that, again, that you feel may be not respected or appreciated or valued. You know, you have to, as an individual first, begin to love yourself first before anyone else can love you. So a lot of these pride, pride movements have people involved who actually hate themselves. Um, and they actually hate other people, but it's just an opportunity. And this is not everybody. I do believe some people genuinely go in with a pure and a good heart, wanting to see change in society, want to see people experience love, true love, which is compassion, understanding, not feeling having to feel condemned and ostracized and made to feel, you know, inferior. But there are some people who, again, they're in these movements, but they can care less about anybody, including themselves. They've just, you know, tap into, you know, a mindset or a level or a, a sphere of toxicity. You know what I'm saying? That's just kind of like the enemy. You know, the enemy doesn't care about anybody. It's kind of like he's doomed. So everyone, you know, he's trying to take everyone with him. It's kind of that selfish mentality. So it's kind of like if I can have my way, then no one can, um, no one can have their way. So we're going to make life difficult. We're going to. Even oppressed, you'll find that even people who, you know, let's for, 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 for instance, you'll have people within the LGBT uh, community who, again, wants freedom of, you know, of expression and being able to be themselves. But you'll find that within their own community, within that own space, there is division, there's strife, there's hate, there's jealousy, there's envy. There's all these different things within that group. And it's kind of like, as the Lord said, a house divided cannot stand. So how are you projecting, even with Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, another movement, another pride movement, or even, you know, um, other movements out there that are professing their, that are declaring or trying to declare their worthiness or their value to human beings. And it's like your value comes from God, right? Your value comes from the spirit of God. And once you have uh, discovered your value,
and you begin to sustain it, there's really nothing that you have to prove to anybody. You just live your life. And as you live your life, the Spirit of God just illuminates you and you begin to influence your immediate environment. And that's why I say it starts with yourself and it starts with your, your household. You know, a lot of people have so much hate and animosity and frustration, you know what I'm saying, with people who they don't know and will never know. But when it comes to the people who have actually destroyed their lives, it could be mother, father, brother, sister, family members, they, they you know, they're like a, a coward, right? They, you know, they don't have a voice. And it's kind of like, you know, that doesn't make sense. You can't have all this, you know, kahunas for, you know, people who you don't know because of whatever media is, is narrating about them and not have that same type of energy when it comes to the people who actually did you wrong. You understand? So, um, so with that being said, going back to what is, uh, going back to the topic of this video, right? Your value, your value, right? Um, so the topic of the video is, uh, 38 years, he was, the man was paralyzed, right? So I started this video talking about religion and tradition and how people have allowed, you know, just, um, wolves in sheep's clothing, you know, the blind leading the blind, their mom and father's God to interpret the living God for who, the way that they wanted to interpret God as opposed to people having their own personal experience with God. And so this man, right, 38 years, right? I'm going to go to scripture now. Now, this is John chapter five, right? It says, now there is a, now there, now there is in Jerusalem a pool near the sheep gate. This pool in the Hebrew is called, but what, what is it best? Bethesda, having five porches, alcoves, colonnades, doorways. And these, in these lay a great number of sick folk, some blind, some crippled, and some paralyzed shriveled up waiting for the bubbling up of the water for an angel of the lord went down and appointed season at appointed seasons into the pool and moved and stirred up the water whoever then first after the stirring up of the water stepped in was cured of whatever disease with which he was afflicted there was a certain man there who had suffered with a deep seated and lingering disorder for 38 years until the angel of the Lord reached okay so I, so <laughs> I'm sorry guys so what happens is within this scripture right normally when I'm doing the, the Bible study I'll put like little notes in you know towards the end of a scripture which the spirit would um, would reference like somebody that I met or situation that I can use to give as a reference of what the scripture is explaining. So, for example, there, so this part where it says um, there was a certain man there who had suffered with a deep-seated and lingering disorder for 38 years. Now, recently I came across an individual who was basically on the streets for 27 years, right? For 27 years, they lived on the streets, you know, had drug use and, you know, other stuff, but 27 years, right? Now the person has, you know, gotten their life back on track and, you know, um, and is, is doing good things as far as helping and, and doing, basically returning or servicing, you know what I'm saying? Others who are going through the same thing that he had, he went through and, you know, just doing his part or doing his, repaying his, you know, debt, you know, for what he believe. Um, I don't believe he's actually a believer. I believe he's an atheist, but you know Him just doing as far as giving back because he felt like you know, he he I don't want to say the word blessed but because I don't think it it will it It's something that he would have said um, I believe he made luck he felt that he was lucky right and so he gives back in, in a way that he I believe to be have to be blessed to have um, Given uh, to give back, and so for 27 years this person was on on basically his his words was 27 years on the concrete. 
So I put a note here and I said, you know, I'm not going to say their name, but I was like, this person was on the hard pavement for 27 years, right? Until the angel of the Lord, right? Uh, maybe according to the prayers of his family or mother, uh, reached the Lord and he sent healing for this person, right? So the scripture basically was saying that, um, that the, the, the original person, the, thir uh, the man who for 38 years was paralyzed, um, during wherever they were at that time, the spirit of the Lord had this, this seasonal, these seasonal times where an angel of the Lord would come and, you know, stir up, as the scripture says, stir up the water and whoever stepped in, whoever was able to get in during that season would be healed, right? And so, um, so yeah, so that's where I was like, well, well, this is not the scripture. So that's the note that I put in there that kind of threw me off. But anyways, when, G uh, when Jesus noticed him lying there helpless, knowing that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you want to become well? Are you really... Uh, are you really? I'm sorry. I, I didn't eat. I didn't eat today, so don't mind. Um. When Jesus noticed him, noticed him lying there helpless, knowing that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, "Do you want to become healed? Are you willing? Are you really in?" Are you really in earnest about getting well? I don't know what's going on here. The invalid, the invalid answered, "Sir, I have nobody when the water is moving to put me into the pool. But while I'm trying to come into it myself, somebody else steps down ahead of me." So let's stop here. So the first thing, you know, so obviously Jesus already knew this situation, this man that he was going to meet, and everything that the Lord has done ultimately is to speak to us. It's for us to see and understand. How, you know, nothing's really new under the sun and how these stories and these revelations can reveal certain things in our life when it comes to our faith and how, you know, we may not have been uh, invalid or paralyzed as this individual, but we may be paralyzed in certain areas of our life as far as our belief. Or just like how this man believed, you know what I'm saying, that um, his inability to be healed was because no one would help him to go to the pond. And here comes Jesus saying, you know, um, basically saying, you know, you don't even need, you don't even need that power and you don't even need to wait for the season of healing that the grace of God would send through the angel of the Lord. This is what's even before Jesus had came. So Jesus is saying, you know, um, all you need basically is your faith, right? Let me continue here. So, uh, so, so again, like I was saying, this, the man, he based his ability to heal on tradition, right? Which again... The tradition is, is something that the Spirit of God immediately, the Lord immediately began to dismantle and destroy because tradition, again, has kept people in bondage, even to, to this day. I went on a spiel about tradition and, and listening to other people's interpretation of God and not having your own relationship in the beginning of this video, how detrimental that can be to someone's just life period. You understand what I'm saying? And so... He based this man based his ability to um, to be healed on tradition. He believed that you know for 38 years that his inability to get to the pond during those seasons that everyone else was able to get to it, and because he didn't have to help, his excuse was you know uh, I'm going to read his excuse. Sir, I have nobody when the water is moving to put me into the pool, but while I am trying to come into myself, somebody else steps down ahead of me. So again, he's making excuses for his inability to be healed, right? And so, uh, so again, so he was following the pattern of those who came before him and were capable and were capable to receive this seasonal healing. Now, I talked about tradition, right? The pattern, that's what tradition is. It's a pattern that human beings create. It may be something that God may have done way back when, just because he's God and he can do that. But it's like, you know, we don't want to limit God in his ability to reach us. We don't want to limit God in his capacity to heal us. We want to believe that God is who he says he is, that he is God Almighty, and that however he wants to heal you, restore you, redeem you, he can do it. You know, you just have to believe as his creation that you are, that, that he can, right? And so, 
Um, the other thing was that this template, right? This template of healing, right? I say a template of healing because the requirement for his healing mean, meant in his mind that he had to be able to get to the pool. He had to walk to the pool. So in other words, a lot of people feel like they have to go to church in order for them to experience the spirit of God. Or they have to go to, you know, a, a building or to a certain person to encounter God. And it's just like, no, right? That is that is not the case um, where, where the Lord is concerned. Whereas his inability to move according to everyone else caused him to miss out for 38 years. So because he was, again, following a template when it comes to, I guess, religion and tradition, um, that caused him to miss God, as they say, for 38 years. To miss God as in God's omnipotent, omniscient ability, right? All-powerful, all-knowing ability to meet you where you're at once you have been given, I should say, the awareness or the understanding that, you understand what I'm saying? That, that God is everywhere, right? And that you don't have to follow the traditions of man or you don't have to, you know, wait, so to speak, you understand what I'm saying? Every season or for a particular season as these people waited for the angel of the Lord to get your healing. If you want to be healed, you have to seek ye first. You have to desire God wholeheartedly. Your heart has to communicate a thirst for the spirit of God. And the belief, let God be true and every man a liar. The belief is that God will hear you. The belief is that when you have truly cried out and you have really reached your limit of frustration and you know ready to throw in the towel here comes the spirit of god and sometimes that's exactly what it takes for you to receive your breakthrough you know it's not about trying to play strong and trying to you know you know act like you you know that you you got it under control when again you just want to give up it's best that you just be honest and be true to who you are and let god you know do what he does which is to save his people, which is to, you know, uh, to protect, deliver, and love love on his, on his people. But the pride of man, you know, when I think about Adam and Eve, you know, when they disobeyed and they became, they, their eyes were opened and, you know, they saw that they were naked, you know, they went and took the initiative to now, based on the, the dark knowledge that they received, they now went and, you know, decided to dress themselves with, grass or with you know leaves you understand what i'm saying and god had to eventually come and upgrade their apparel right he had to upgrade their apparel you know according to again god's value according to god's um intention according to god's design according to god's standard his standard you know perfect and excellent you know he stripped that grass or those leaves off of them and dressed them in you know leather right that comes from animals so you know again this is what happens when we try to take things in in our own hand or try to you know do things without god you know um and again most times we're following the traditions of men we're following what we saw growing up or what we heard growing up and it's like god has is this is not the law this is not the way of the law this you know this has never been him Right. But eventually, because of God's love, you know, Jesus, um, this man, for you know, after 30 years, he has now encountered the Messiah. And of course, for our for our reference as well, um, the man wanted to be healed, but he was trusting in relying on and adhering to a human perspective or a shown proven way of getting healed until the Lord shows up and shows him a different way, a more personable, unique way. So going back to what I was saying is that, you know, what he saw, you know, was tradition. You know, he saw or subscribed to a human perspective, which tends to be limited, right? It's, it's very, it's, it's restricted, right? The humans, the human nature and the human ability to think on the level of God or, you know, according to God's ways, it's impossible. In order for you to see what God needs you to see, you have to be given access by the Spirit of God. You have to be approved by the Spirit of God to know exactly what it is that um, He wants you to know. Um, right? And so when the Spirit of when the Lord came in and showed up, showed began to speak to this man, it was kind of like, you know, the Lord came and was like, you know, do you do you want to be healed? Right? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to become well? 
are you really earnest about getting well? It's like, are you really earnest about knowing God? Are you really earnest about your healing? Are you really earnest about your breakthrough? Are you really earnest about receiving God's promises for your life? Are you really earnest about changing your life? Are you really earnest, you know what I'm saying, about, you know, doing whatever it is that you want to do, that you say you want to do, but is your heart really earnest about it, right? And so the Lord says, do you want to become well? Because I don't understand how you could be on this floor for 38 years, making it, talking about this person gets in front of you and you, you, you don't have the time. It's kind of like, so after year one, year two, year three, after year 15, don't you not try to re-strategize or try something new to get where you know, you're trying to go? Do you not leave a little earlier? Or do you not have something set up on the side so that when that time comes, whenever the season comes, you can snatch it up and, and be ready, as the word said, be ready to go get your healing. It's kind of like, so do you want to be healed? Do you want to become healed? Because it seems like you have become accustomed to this lifestyle. It seems like you're comfortable in this lifestyle, right? Essentially, that's basically, to me, you know, that's where, that's where that question comes from. So here comes the Lord. And the Lord shows him a personable, I say a personable, unique way of um, established by faith and the love of God for his creation. So the love of God created a personable experience, a unique experience for this individual to receive his healing. And the beautiful thing about it, thank God for him, the beautiful thing about it for him and for us, you know, when God has, when God does that for us, as he did for me, when I was seeking, I didn't know what I was seeking. All I knew that was that I needed help. All I knew that my life was not going the way that it should be going. I knew that I was tired. I knew that I was just tired of running around. I was tired of the rat race. I, I knew that I wanted peace. I desired peace and I began to seek God the way I inherently felt I needed to seek God and that was meditating. So I would just meditate, close my eyes and just try to get silence and clarity. And I did, I don't know how long I did it for, but it wasn't too long, to be honest with y'all, with it was not too long until that supernatural experience that I had, that radical experience that I had with God in early 2016. Around this time, literally five years ago, um, around this time, um, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling April, like around April. It wasn't until you know, I had that supernatural radical experience, as I talked about in the video, that cannot be explained. I can't really explain to you, you know, what happened to me, my baptism, my, birth, my born again experience. You know, the law talks about how this is something that can't necessarily be explained. He says, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he says basically just like how, you know, the wind blows and we don't know which way it, um, which way it goes. You know, that is basically how the born again or born of God experience is it happens. And that's, and I have to agree with that. I can't tell you what that experience is like other than I was in my space. I was in my mom's living room and I was meditating and, you know, silence and peace. And then that was it. I felt the Holy Spirit in my heart. And it was such a joyous, overwhelmingly joyous situation. I was like, what's going on here? I remember I went to the bathroom and I couldn't even, it's like my eyes was open. It was so overwhelming that I couldn't even open my eyes. It's like I wanted to open my eyes, but I was so, I felt so good in just like squinting that it was just like, whatever. And then I was just again in basking in the moment. And then I went back to, because at that point I was, you know, I was, I was in my, in my mom's one bedroom apartment, sleeping in the living room on the floor. You know, that's what I'm saying. And so I had like my bed spread and stuff on the floor. And I remember just going back to lay down and I was just laying there enjoying this beautiful feeling. And then the Holy Spirit began to testify of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he is, you know, the son of God, the savior. And then and then here comes the boohoo tears and just the remorse and just the sorrow because again i was someone who again just defined god based on my earthly experiences all the bad things that happened to me as a child and all the things that i experienced from adults and people that i knew should have loved me and, and protected me it was kind of like if there's a god why are all these things happening like what's going on here and so 
um, when, so all of that went out the door when, again, God, God the Father brought me to his son and began to, you know, Holy Spirit began to testify of Jesus Christ and what they did to Jesus and how, you know, Jesus was crucified. And I began to weep because of, again, just what they did to the Lord and, and what we did to the Lord, you know what I'm saying? And, and what God had to do for us so that we can be restored to him and, and, and begin and to have a beautiful life ultimately, right? It's kind of like, wow. And it's like, you think about how selfish you was. I thought about how selfish I was, how inconsiderate I was, how, you know, how ungrateful I was, how I used to say I don't believe in God. And I don't think I've ever said I hate God. Did I ever say I hate you, God? I don't, I don't think I ever said that. But I, but it's almost like if you said, you know, when I used to say I don't believe in God, it was kind of like I was, I was angry at God. I was angry at God because of a lot of things, like I said, that was happening. And I was blaming God for it. But it was of obviously, you know, that when you get the spirit of truth, you know, God has nothing to do with any types of any type of evil or wickedness that happens in the life of his children. It has to do with us. And it has to do just again, just the things that people, you know what I'm saying, do as far as, you know, within bloodlines and family and things like that. And, you know, and it's like, here is God giving me an opportunity to do things differently, right? Here is God giving me an opportunity to, um, to do things differently, like to, to serve him, you know, to make, to make better decisions, to do things that, you know, that I guess, you know, other people before me didn't want to do or going back to faith, you know, a lot of the things when it comes to the Lord has to do with faith. If not, everything has to do with faith. You know, it's impossible to please God without faith. And so what happens is sometimes, you know, people are in situations where it's, you know, are you going to use your faith or are you going to allow the enemy to use fear and to have you run away or slink back? Or, I mean, I don't know, you know, your walk is your walk. You will know exactly where you went wrong if you are using or, you know, your frame of reference is the spirit of God. He will reveal to you straightforward lovingly of course and in whichever way he needs to communicate for you to for you to get it he will reveal to you exactly what happened in your family you know what happened with you and basically everything that you need to you know that the love of god gives you so that you can have a truthful perspective a clear understanding of what what is this world what this world is about you know what your life is about his plans for you you know um of course not entirely revealed but you get nuggets or incremental revelations of his plan for you um, and everything else as far as, you know, again, his God's will, his perfect, acceptable, uh, his good, uh, acceptable and perfect will for not only your life, but for the life of the people that you are called to influence. And of course, everything that has to do, you know, with the coming of, of our Lord. And so, you know, yeah, so that was my experience. And, you know, from there, it's just been, it was just my walk. It was the beginning of you know, as they say, ushered into the wilderness and the temptations and all of that. And, you know, it's been a walk. It's been a, it's been a faith walk. And, you know, I, the Lord has been good to me. I realized that at the, end of, at the end of the day, the Lord does not want us to struggle. He does not want us to go through anything that is unnecessary or does, that, or does not go or is part of his plan for salvation for us, right? We go from faith to faith. The Lord is a God... Um, is the author and author and finisher of our fate. So ultimately, he has strategically created a life for you or a path for you that will get you to where you need to be, right? Um, ultimately, again, it's up to you. Are you willing to have faith? Are you willing to trust and adhere to rely on the Spirit of God when those times or those seasons, seasons of testing come? I mean, again, it's still up to you. So I know a lot of people want to sit on this grace gospel you know, this, you know, misunderstood grace gospel or, um, and whatever else the Antichrist and, and, you know, the synagogues of Satan had preached into the hearts and minds of God's people. What you need to understand is that while we do have grace, grace in that everything that the Spirit of God has done for us, you know, we, could, we couldn't work for it, right? But at the same time, there's nothing that we could, could have done to to get what God gave us freely and what he did through his son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. However, when it comes to the fulfillment of the promises as it were in the Old Testament, right? These people needed faith. They needed to trust in, rely on, adhere to the spirit of God. That is why the Lord showed himself, right? 
the, mir the miracles that he did, the supernatural things that he did in Egypt and in the wilderness, it was to reveal himself to his people so that they can begin to believe. The same thing Jesus did in his time. When he began to show his miracles, of course, at first it was to the people that he, that he called his disciples, but then eventually his, he began to show himself even more. And it, um, it, uh, it attracted believers, right? He, he became more, more and more influential, right? And the whole point of doing miracles and, and you know, showing your power, even as a disciple, even as one who's a follower of Christ, which the Lord said, greater things sh we shall do in his name, ultimately is to give God the glory, right? When a person sees you after God has done major works in your life and they begin to see the transformation in you, at the end of the day, they should be able to say, or they should be saying, wow, that has to be God. Like God has definitely changed this man's life. Even if they're not, if, even if they're an atheist or whatever, the change of God in your life should be so profound that they would have to believe that it's practically impossible for a human being to go through such transition or transformation, not only in this, not only in this lifetime, but at such an excel, at such an accelerated rate, right? Um, that is just impossible, and, uh, and that's just the glory of God. That is just the character of God. That's the nature of God, which distinguishes him, which is kind of like you have to bow down. Like you have to, you know, give credit where credit is due. You have to, like I said, bow down. And so when it comes to the enemy and his refusal to honor God and to respect God um, for who he is and, you know, even the people who follow him, right? Once you are follower of the enemy, you are in opposition to God as we were right before God's grace. Now again, God knows all hearts and he understands the things that has happened to the human race and why human beings have basically inherited death as their portion. But you know, we've been restored to life through the last Adam, Jesus Christ, and have been given again the option, right? The buffet, as I talked about early in the video, the buffet of, of, of good food, of royal food that you can eat from. After you've been given such truth, after you've been given su such knowledge, after you've been given such decadent pleasures as far as food, right? And I'm talking metamorphically here, but, or symbolically here, but you got to understand what I'm saying is that after you've been given such riches from heaven that, you know, that you can find nowhere else, where do you go? You know, who, like, what, what other God do you go to? You understand what I'm saying? Where do you go to get your nourishment? Where do you go? Who do you, who, who, who do you want protecting you? Who do you want... You know to bless you you know who you know who else can help you after the spirit of god has revealed himself in that capacity it's just like there's no one and so if you do turn back or go or backslide or not necessarily blacks are uh, uh, black uh backslide because a righteous man shall fall what seven times and even more but like where like how is how do you leave this god to go worship another god you know, after he has shown himself, after he has shown his love and loyalty and mercy towards you and the kindness that he's extended, right? Um, after he's revealed, you know, your, you and, and your past and what was rightly due because of our disobedience. And you realize, wow, like God is really amazing. Like he's really wonderful. Like, like forget all this, forget all these people. Like I'm, I'm out, like I'm sold out for the Lord. You know, that's kind of, I believe, you know, I'm not saying that that's been me. I, I always, you know, I don't have to go into details about my personal cries out, crying out to the Lord or the convictions that I have, not being condemned by the enemy or anything like that, but just knowing that I can always do better. Like, you know when you can do better. You know when you can put more time towards God. You know that, you know, instead of surfing the internet or being on social media for hours and hours, that you could have been reading the word of God, the Holy Bible. You could have been eating the word. You understand? We know, like, when we can put more time into the things of God and not allowing the world to consume us, which is one of the things that we've been delivered from. We've, we were delivered from the bondage of the enemy that held us in captivity to the world's structures, right? Being conformed to, to this world. And so one of the things that we are not supposed to do is not to be conformed by the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which is fulfilled by the reading of the word, the self-fulfilling power of the word so as you read the word as you take your decision as you exercise your faith believing that who the word says he is um is and so you're now eating the word bread um man shall not live by bread alone 
but by, but by every word that coming out, coming out of the mouth of God. So your faith is saying, okay, I believe that I shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that coming out of the mouth of God. That includes historical word, the Holy Bible, and his personal words that God gives you as his chosen one, as his vessel, as his child, as his prophet, as his priest, as his king, as his judge. You know, God still speaks, give words, just like he gave words to Jeremiah and, and, and Isaiah and Ezekiel and all the major and minor prophets. God still gives, the Lord still gives words to his people. Um, but it's do, do you, again, do you value the things of the Lord? Do you value the kingdom of God? Are you seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that all these things can be added to you? All the good things that come in from heaven, all the good things in the rich uh, treasury of, of the spirit of the Lord in his storehouses, are you, you know, are you... Are you valuing these things? Or are you allowing the nothingness of the world that the Lord has revealed this nothingness, right? Where you, you know, you, you, you are willing to sell your soul for the nothingness of this world. And we, it's like after he done revealed the truth, it's kind of like, what else, like, what else do you do? You understand what I'm saying? What, what else can I do to show you that I'm not just the carpenter's son. I am the Messiah. I am the, the anointed one. Right. And essentially, that's basically why, you know, he had to leave certain communities back then, because even after his miracles, they didn't want to believe. So going back to this man, even thank God, like I said, for, for him and for us, this man believed. He said, you know, the, the Lord asked him, do you want to get well? And, um, and he said, let me see. Uh, see something real quick uh, so when the Lord asked him do you want to become well right the, in, the invalid the invalid the invalid answered sir I have nobody when the water is moving to put me in the pool but while I'm trying to come into it myself someone somebody else steps down ahead of me so ultimately he's basically saying I do want to get healed but here is why I can't get healed. And so the Lord discerned, and of course the Lord had compassion over him. I mean, 38 years, right? Um, and let this be revelatory as far as, again, you may not have been 38 years on a hard concrete or 27, year, 27 years on a hard co uh, concrete like the individual I was telling you that I met recently and was telling, was, that was his story. Your, 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 your bondage or your, this, your invalid lifestyle could be just your belief system your mindset your lack of faith the things that the seeds that were implanted into you whether by choice or not that you learn from other people who you know again was living themselves in bondage and, and just in opposition to the spirit of god that you know you just was disabled invalid for 38 years some people have been you know disabled quote unquote for more than 30 years you understand what i'm saying a lifetime you know, so it's, it's so, but when I think about it, like I get, I don't know, I get a headache because it's kind of like, it's so, it's so serious. And it's, and it's kind of like when you finally experience true freedom, when the spirit of God finally comes upon you and begin to move in your life, it's kind of like, or just, you know, your acquaintance and your experience with the spirit of God, it's kind of like, like, where do you go to? Like, like, what can be more valuable as far as your time and your resources and your effort? You understand what I'm saying? Like, so clearly there's some unbelief or, or thing where it comes to your, where your belief and lack of faith that is hindering you from seeing God for who he truly is and seeing the word for what the word truly is, right? The self-fulfilling power of God's word. And so, um, so after the Lord discerns and said, okay, you know what? He actually wants to get healed, but he, you know, he just, he just don't know any better, right? Essentially. And so Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your bed and walk. And the word says, John five, uh, John chapter five, verses eight says, instantly the man became well, instantly the man became well, because of course his faith uh, I believe the Lord um, discerned that he had the faith to be healed, right? Um, outside of the circumstance, outside of his belief, he genuinely believed that what he believed ultimately is that if he can get to the pool, he would be healed, right? 
That's basically what he was saying. He was like, I, you know, I believe I can be healed. I just need to get to the pool. However, this is why I'm not giving to the pool. So that right there says that he had a level of faith more than those around him. But he, for whatever reason, just couldn't get to the pool. So, you know, the, and the Lord discerned that. So instantly, as the word says, John 5, 8 says, instantly the man became well and recovered his strength and picked up his bed and walked. And so it goes into, you know, this happening on the Sabbath and the Pharisees and the traditions of men, you know, feeling some type of way because the Lord healed a man that was 38 years, you know, an invalid. In the islands, we say invalid, but disabled. And it's kind of like, are you joking? Are you serious? We, we're really going to have a conversation about this healing on the Sabbath. Like this man has been disabled for 38 years. And you're going to feel some type of way to go tell this man, according to John 5, 9, that you have no right to pick up your bed. It's, it's not lawful. <laughs> But again, this is the, what the, the traditions of man has done, the false teachings, you know, and this pride. This is what it does. It destroys people's lives. And going into the next part of this message is that when you've experienced the grace of God and the favor of God and the hand of God has come upon you in whatever capacity, you know, whatever it is that he has freed you from, here comes the people who try to despise or minimize God's miracles in your life in whichever way that they try to do it. And it's kind of like, you don't want to play with those types of people. You don't want to play with people, especially if there are people who, I've experienced people who have experienced God's love. They've experienced the hand of God. Like they know the Lord and could not see the Lord working in another person's life. They, they was not able to receive again the miracles and the power of God's um, work in, in a person in, an, in another person's life a person's life that they, they that they know that they know you know what the lord has done for this individual has changed them like the lord has done a mighty work in this person's life but for some reason they're not able to see it now there's there are multiple reasons it could be hard-heartedness it could be them being left to their repro uh, reprobate mind because they valued wickedness more than more than the light they value darkness more than the light and you know just like anything else we know God is grace, gracious and merciful, kind and loving, but you're not just going to, uh, you know, abuse the Lord and, and feel like you're going to do what you want to do. Again, the Lord knows our hearts, so you just, you, you, you're you not going to just do what you want to do and think that you're not going to suffer the consequences for it. And so, you know, people don't talk about the doors being shut, right? Or people don't like talking about the curses in Deuteronomy 28, the half, half of Deuteronomy 28, or should I say the three-quarter part of Deuteronomy 28, which talks, of, of course, the first part, the first part talks about the blessing. And in the last part, the, I say three-quarter because I feel like the curse covers up, covers the majority of that chapter. You know, nobody wants to talk about the consequences of disobedience. Nobody wants to talk about, you know, <laughs> nobody wants to talk about, you know, what happens when you fail to heed or hearken on to the voice of the Spirit of God. Like, it's a real thing. It's a very real thing. And, you know, um, but yeah, that's maybe another conversation for another day. But um, so here, here's this man who has been, again, 38 years. This man has been, I mean, 38 years, right? The Lord has come and he has healed him. And you have people who have been living their best life. You understand what I'm saying? They, they've been walking and eating well and doing whatever they want to do. And they're trying to hate on this man's healing. They're trying to get this man back into bondage. They're trying to condemn this man. That's what they did. When they said, so the Jews, so 5 9 says, so the Jews came, kept, the Jews kept saying to the man, kept saying to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath and you have no right to pick up your bed. It is not lawful. No, that's the enemy, right? So glory to God. I just I feel the anointing now. This, this is the enemy again. When God has done things in your life, marvelous, wonderful things in your life, here comes the enemy through condemnation. So again, the, so the Jews kept saying, so what they were trying to do was to convince this man and to make this man essentially ungrateful for the healing that the Spirit of God gave him, right? 
Um, and, and what they were using was, glory to God, what they were using was tradition. They was using tradition. They was using tradition to keep this man in bondage. So ultimately, when they said to him, when they kept saying to him, and this is scripture, the, the word says, kept saying, this is powerful here, kept saying, they were insistent, they were incessant, they were continual in their condemnation towards him after this man had been in bondage for 38 years, y'all. 38 years. Can you think about people who have been in, in bondage, spiritual bondage, captivity for 38 years? Imagine people who have been, let's, let's make it more natural. Let's talk about people who has been incarcerated in jail, in prison for 38 years plus. And then something happened, you know, where a uh, decision is overturned. They found, you know, the Spirit of God through some evidence or opened their eyes to some evidence. Or however the Spirit of God works. And this individual who has been in jail for 38 years is now free when you know they were supposed to be in jail for a lifetime and they're now free and so now they're coming out in, into this world and then here comes the people who you know maybe the decision that he made long time ago you know what i'm saying that those people are still around and here they are trying to bring up his past and trying to make him feel like you know he should go back to jail like he should have been better you know they 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 will try to make him feel so bad in his freedom Right, that he will want to go back into captivity, that he would rather be in jail for the rest of his life than to enjoy the little bit of freedom after the 38 years that he's been in jail outside of these walls because of the condemnation and the judgment of the people who, you know, are trying to, again, have him feel insecure or unworthy or ungrateful. When the Spirit of God has said, I have freed you, I have forgiven you, I have delivered you, I have, you know, I have opened the gates for you to, to be free to start life over again. And so this is, this is interesting because even in your own personal life, maybe God has done some, some stuff for, for you. Maybe he has delivered you from sexual perversion. Maybe he has, he has you know, um, delivered you from, you know, some really bad situations. You know, maybe you, you've committed a crime or, you know, done some really messed up things. And the Spirit of God has his freedom for you may be interpreted as confidence, as joy, as happiness, as just not allowing, you know, the shame of your past to hold you down anymore. But here comes people coming to bring up your past. Here comes people coming to point the finger and, and, and say, do you remember this or this or, or even sometimes people's attitude towards you? You know, they may not say certain things, but how they treat you communicates louder how they feel about you. And so, again, it's it's like, what do you do? Get up from amongst those people, pick up your bed and walk. So, um, so let me continue here. He answered them. So the man, so he now, so the, the, the inv well, the once invalid, invalid, now restored man says, he testifies, as we all should do when the Spirit of God has delivered us from whatever it is or have restored us from whatever our sinful nature was in its multiple form or singular form, right? Um, and so he, he answered, he, he immediately, immediately begins to testify. He says, the man who healed me and gave me my strength, my, gave me back my strength, he himself said to me, pick up your bed and walk. Um, and I think that's where that's where it ended uh, for me uh, for today. But, you know, it's like, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you come against the hand of God? How dare you come against the grace of God? How dare you come against the mercy of God? How dare you position yourself to feel that you can override God's rule ruling? Isn't that something? And it's like, if you don't have... This is why I talk about identity. This is why I talk about self-love. This is why I talk about the importance of knowing who you are in Christ, in Christ, knowing who you are in God. Because if you don't, people are going to try to walk all over you like they did. They're going to, they, they, they want you to be, <laughs> they want you to walk the Lord. They want you to, they, yeah. If some people had, if some people had the power to destroy you without getting caught or without, you know, having to deal with the consequences of what you deal with when you commit a crime, um, there would be so much lawlessness in our society that it's, 
I mean, and it doesn't take away from, again, we're not, you know, saying our system is perfect, but could, could you imagine if there was, if we lived in a lawless society where people just did not have to suffer the consequences for their bad decisions, what would happen? You understand what I'm saying? And it's just like, glory to God, glory to God in this spiritual aspect for everything, but in this spiritual context that, you know, that when you meditate on his word day and night when you are feeding your inner man when you're eating the bread when you're drinking from the rivers of living water so that you do not thirst again you are not you will never and i say this because i believe god to be true and every man a liar you will never have to be subjected or suffer the consequence or suffer on 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 a losing end you know when it comes to the opinions or the traditions of men or the things that that the enemy uses people to do. You understand what I'm saying? To try to get you back into captivity, to try to get you to work for what God has freely given, to try to get you to be something that you're not, to make you ungrateful. Ultimately, one of the strategies of the enemy is to make people ungrateful. Ungrateful for the little things that they have, even if it's a roof or, or over their head, even if it's if if they have to walk to work when everyone else is driving, even if they have a slice of bread in the fridge as opposed to nothing, the enemy wants you to be ungrateful because in your ungratefulness, especially as a born again believer, what I mean, what can be greater than your salvation? What can be greater than your acquaintance and experience of the Spirit of the Living God? What is greater than that outside of? The worldly things that the Lord himself said you will have when you seek me first. You will have that, but you need to be prepared. You need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You need to have a righteous perspective to handle the, these blessings. Because when I bless you, it's not just going to be for you as the world who's, who the world is selfish and self-seeking. When I bless you, you have to understand my language. You have to know my voice. You have to be, I have to trust you. I know that you'll be obedient. You understand what I'm saying to the things that I'm giving you? Not saying that I, I, I don't bless and rain on the just and the unjust. I rain on everybody. But at the same time, as my disciple, as my chosen one, as the people set aside to represent me in the earth, not everyone else. Everyone else don't have that. I know a lot of people like to think we're all God's children. Yes, we are all God's creation, but we're not all God's children. Okay, it's a difference. Yes, I've created you to be famous and distinguished. Yes, I've anointed you and I've appointed you. I made you a prophet um, in, um, in, before the nation. But because of all of this stuff that has transpired as far as our fallen nature, there is a transformation, obviously, that needs to be done. But most importantly, there is a development of a relationship. There is a development of a union, of a marriage that needs to be established before I can truly be one with you, right? Before I can truly, and I'm speaking in, in, in the sense of, of the Lord, the Spirit of God as what he's revealed to me. There's, there is a time or seasons of development and, 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 and communing and fellowship that, you know, I can't just bless you. I mean, God can do what he wants, right? You know, God can do what he wants. But I'm saying from, again, my experience, it's kind of like if I knew... First of first and foremost, what I know now, had I known what I know now, know now, you know, when it comes to money and relationships and people and just the world, if I knew the things that I knew now, if I had the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God that I obviously if I had it back then, like my life would have been completely different. If I had the confidence and the boldness and just the the level of not caring about people's opinions and, and things. I'm not saying that I'm 100% there, but I've come such a long way. And I'm saying if I had that, these revelations or insights back then, my life, I, you know, my life would be, I wouldn't be here right now. As far as legacy, as far as the promises of God that he promised to my forefathers. This is just me speaking from my Revelation and my because I because I have a relationship with the Spirit of God because I know what the God that the Lord has revealed to me I can speak Boldly and unapologetically not necessarily in details because you don't need to know everything But I can speak about God's goodness and I can speak about what could have been had I not made bad choices What could have been had I not allowed certain you know people or, or situations to override or overrule what God was saying to me in my spirit what could have happened had I not allowed uh unforgiveness and resentment and anger to control my life, right? My life would have been different. Now, glory to God that he's able to turn all things for the good of those who love him. 
he's able to work everything out in, in my favor and he's the god of, of of restoration right but that's still that's still his that is still a gift from god you know it, it's not that he has to give it to me so even when he grants it to me and opens my eyes to this that you know i can and, and, and lets me know you know don't worry about these people don't worry about the hurt in the past don't you know don't worry about what you lost or what you could have done i'm just speaking just to give you an example but um you know don't worry about dying you understand what i'm saying don't worry about these don't have fear about these things because you're good like you're mine. You've always been mine. You understand what I'm saying? And the reason why you're still here is because I've been watching over you. Even when you thought I was not there, my eyes were vigilantly on you, watching every area of your life. Little did, did you know I was protecting you from the works of the enemy. Little did you know that I was strengthening you, strength, uh, strengthening you for you to deal with situations that your poor decisions had caused you to um to experience. Little did you know. So again, here comes, you know. It just, this just, this just, this just, this just, just pissed me off, y'all. Like, and it's, it, it pissed me off because it's like these are, it talk about the Jews. These are the people who are supposed to know God. These are the people who, who supposedly, habitually walked with God, right? Think about that in contemporary Christianity. Your pastors, your evangelists, your, you know, the deacons, and all these titles that that's in the church. These are people who should be, honestly sleeping eating the lord because that is the mantle that is the responsibility that they took and then come to find out they are your biggest hater they're big mad when the spirit of god has you know chosen you to do something specific that outshines them that undermines ultimately their 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 power and the authority that they lived and breathed and here comes the spirit of god now choosing you someone who again this man, 38 years, he was a bum on the street, probably a vagrant, right? Here you come, you know, simple old you, and here comes the anointing and the Spirit of God coming upon you and establishing you as his favored one, establishing you as his anointed one, establishing you for great purposes. That is going to get pe get people mad, not just those pastors and, and, and those people, but even in your own family, even in your own bloodline, even in, you know, people who you thought you would never not speak to or never be apart from, but because the spirit of God has come upon you, because now you are a new creature in Christ, because now, you know, you are free. Right, again, going back to this, the truth that we live in an oppressive, uh, an oppressive society. So once you begin to start living in the freedom God gives you, it's going to offend people, right? It's going to offend people when you start walking like royalty, but you live wherever you live. You know, it's going to offend people when you start speaking a certain way, but you don't have a, a, a degree. It's going to offend people when you dress a certain way, but you don't spend $500 on sneakers or, or on jackets. It's going to offend people because people in this world, you know, when, when I say people in this world, I'm talking about people who... Um, who have not been given the Holy Spirit or the revelation according to God's according to God's truth, there is uh, there the value that we place and and this is from my experience the value that I placed on certain material stuff is kind of like you equate or you evaluate or you judge people based on what they have. So if they have the bigger the house, the more money they have. The more the, the nicer the car, the more expensive the car. You know all these different things that people use to communicate their wealth and which ultimately is communicating their identity you know when when they're stripped of these things this is why some rich people they commit suicide when things happen as far as their wealth being lost or, or destroyed is because they they have nothing outside of their material possession they have no identity they have no foundation and this is what happens when you know, and this is the complete opposite of what happens when the Spirit of God comes in your life, especially as a, a poor person. It's kind of like once you have the Spirit of God, royalty in your life, and you know what I'm saying, and you begin having a standard about yourself, especially in a society where culturally, you know, people have their perceptions of how they think certain people should act and how they think certain people should behave. Some people, unfortunately, it is what it is. I mean, it has nothing to do with you and it should not affect you in any, in any which way and it should not cause you to hate them. But the truth of the matter is there are people who subscribe to mindsets when it comes to, that's why racism and discrimination and these things happen. It's not because, you know, it's good to love and, and, and love and, and, and be, you know, and be airy. But at the same time, it's like, let's 
talk facts. Let's, let's talk about the realities of our situation. Let's talk about the fruits that's being buried in our society that's revealing, you know, what's hidden in plain sight. Let's talk about, yes, the systemic oppression, but let's talk about even more deeply or more seriously, you know what I'm saying, why it's been going on for so long and, and we've had all these movements and all this political talks about transformation and this and this and that, but nothing is really changing because at the end of the day, it's no different from what the enemy has done or used to do or is still doing. It's kind of like this, it's, it's the same concept of deception. It's the same concept of being crafty. If you don't have, if you don't have, again, the spirit of God in you to cut through the deception, to see with your spiritual eyes, you know what I'm saying? The deception of the enemy and, and the strategies of the enemy and how he intertwines even things that looks good, how with the spirit of God in you, you're able to discern and cut through the deception and see, quote unquote, good for what it really is, actually evil, right? And so that's why a lot of the times these things, these, again, these philosophies and these mindsets where people feel like it's okay to enslave someone because they don't look like you or to feel like someone is unworthy or, you know what I'm saying, or is inferior to you because of the color of, their, of your skin. That is a mindset. That is a philosophy. That is a belief system that somebody created out of their fallen nature and began to teach it and attracted followers who, again, discovered their self-worth according to whatever it is that they see physically as a, as opposed to God's truth and, and what the spirit has created us to value most importantly, which is God. And through God, you know, that is where our identity is, is sustained. And so once you know who you are, according to, according to God's revelation, according to God's truth, no one can stop you. No inferior mindset, no oppressive mindset, no lying mindset, no deceptive mindset, no work of the enemy can continue to oppress you once you come into, in whatever oppression that is, spiritual or physical, you understand what I'm saying? Your eyes will be open to freedom. And as your eyes are open to freedom, you begin to understand and have insight and revelation and, and just a whole new different view on life. You begin to see things differently so that you're not subscribing to the intentional narratives that are created to have people hate and be divisive and unforgiving and vindictive. You begin to now think, okay, Lord, how do you want me to deal with this situation? How do you want me to show, show up in this situation with your light? Because I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know the power is in your name. I can speak a word, I can decree a word, and you will send your angels to transform a situation. You will send your angels to fight battles that I don't have to fight, right? How, how are you using your identity um, as a child of God, are you using the tools? Are you using the principles? Are you applying the principles that the Spirit of God has made available to you and has revealed to you because you meditated on His Word day and night, right? So all of these things is not again not God, the Lord trying to force you to force you to do something that you know, you know that you don't want to do. It's for your own good. It's for your own strength. It's for your own. As this man, he, he says here, the Lord. In other words, he was saying that. Uh, instantly the man became well and recovered his strength. The word of God is to make you well, right? But not only make you well, but to sustain your wellness. The word of God is to give you strength, but not to only give you strength one time, but to perpetually strengthen you, right? So that you can pick up your bed, whatever that bed is, and continue to walk. In other words, to continue press, pressing forward, pressing forward to fulfilling the plans of God for your life as was predestined before the foundations of the world, as a career, as you were created anew in Christ Jesus to achieve. And so once Christ comes into your life and you begin to, to walk as a new creature, yeah, there are people who are going to want to come from your past and people who may know things about you and even lies, maybe things that are not true that the enemy is going to try to come at you with. But you have to, again... Maintain your wellness, maintain your strength, right? That is that is the word. Maintain your relationship with God. Maintain your con your connectivity with the Spirit of God so that you are habitually sustained. You understand what I'm saying? Not saying that you won't go through trials and tribulations, but the Lord himself said, I have overcome the world. And so because I've overcome the world, I know what you need to overcome the world. In fact, I already have everything ready for you, for you to overcome the world. You just have to trust and believe. You just have to trust and rely on and adhere to me, right? So that just pissed me off again, y'all. It just came to my mind, like, the, the, because I know right now what, why, why it frustrates me and, and why, you know, it, it, it boils my blood is because 
you have people again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who believe if you're going to take a leadership responsibility, if you're going to choose to take on a leadership uh, responsibility, if you're going to choose to profess the name of the Lord, if you're going to choose to represent the good, good house of God, and then now switch it up to represent your own beliefs, causing so many people to go astray, causing so many sheep to, you know, to, to go astray, causing so many of God's children to turn against God's God because of your lies and because of your deception, causing so many people to go back into bondage because of tradition and, and, and false teachings. That is pure wickedness. That is wickedness beyond words. And it's kind of like, how dare you? You know, you carrying on this 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 mantle, you 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 presenting yourself as a man or woman of God, but your heart is not after God. Your heart never was after God. And here it is, you now trying to incessantly tell this man, they said they kept saying, they kept saying, they kept saying. What are people saying to you? What are people keep saying to you to make you feel like you are not who God says you are? What are you allowing in your life that is making you stay in a situation that you should not be in, but because you're believing what everything is saying around you, about you, you know, especially people that you value or people that you may see as, you know what I'm saying, not necessarily representation of God, but people that you value because you, you have a corrupted, perverted definition of love and loyalty and mercy. So you're being loyal and loving to people who are enemies of your destiny. This was another revelation the Spirit of God had given, had gave me, you know, uh, how, he re how he eventually revealed enemies to my destiny, not at the time, you know, where, you know, where it could have happened because you know, sometimes God is not going to reveal certain things to you because you're just not able. If he was to reveal it to you, you you're not equipped to handle the, the breaking news. I'm sorry. Some of y'all, you know, some of us, you know, if God had revealed to us truth, right? And that's what the love of God does. It protects us at the, end of, at the end of the day. No matter no matter if we want something really bad, if it's not good for us, I believe, you know, I say to the Lord, if listen, I know I want this, Lord, but if it's not for me, don't give it to me. And so it's kind of like, you know, the Spirit of God, you may want to know certain things, but if you're not equipped, if you're not built up strong enough to receive certain breaking news, quote unquote, that could be, a, you know, a disaster. You know, that could set you back in your spiritual growth as far as, you know, um, you know what happens when heartbreak happens, when a heartbreak comes into your life. Guess what happens? You, you know, you, that, that is a whole healing process that, Ain't nobody got time for that. Like, Lord, just like show me who my enemies are before we even get into, you know, this this relationship. I mean, if it's purposeful, if I'm to learn a lesson, okay. But you know, you promised me discernment. Show me who this person is so I can use your godly and skillful wisdom to deal with this person, so that I'm not tying up myself with a situation that ultimately is going to bite me in the butt and and have me, you know, set me back because now I have to go through a healing process. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happens when it comes to, you know, human relationships. It's not just mother, it's not just husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever sexually perverted relationship that you may be in. And that's not just homosexuality or bisexuality. That has to do with fornication or, or adulterous relationships. Anything outside of a covenantal agreement, anything outside of a union, anything outside of a God-ordained ma uh, marriage as intended by the Spirit before the fall of mankind. Now, again, the Spirit of God, you know, it's sin is sin, right? As far as, you know, human beings doing what they want to do, right? Lust, pleasure, pride, all of that. That sin and through the grace of God, we we'll not only, we have all types of restoration. We have all types of uh, restoration to wholeness and completeness and holiness ultimately. So don't let no one make you feel like your sin is worse than theirs and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Because at the end of the day, if God comes into your life and begins to do a work in you, who God bless, no man cursed, and let God be true and every man a liar. If if God says by His stripes you are healed, then by His stripes you are healed. And don't let the temptations and the words of people and the scorns of people and the they say and the he say and the gossip and the slander have you believe anything outside of God's truth. That by his stripes you are healed. You walk in the confidence of that. You walk in the fullness of that. You continue to press forward. You go as David would do when things would happen in his life. He would go to his secret place. Go to his high tower. 
go, you know, do, he who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. When things are happening in your life, with the with the with the enemy is encroaching upon you, and you begin to feel weakness, and you begin to feel, you know, excessive anxiety or fears, where it begins to debilitate you. This is your time to run to the Word. This is your time to to press into the Word, to consume the Word like never before. Because now this is your time of testing. This is your time where you're going to say, who are you going to, who do you believe? Who do you, who are you going to serve this day, right? When the enemy comes up encroaching, when the enemy comes roaring, right? Like a raging lion, okay? To try to have you uh, not believe or to live in or, or, or to do something that counteracts or opposes what you're supposed to do when these things happen. What does, this, what does the Spirit of God say you're supposed to do, right? As far as um, girding yourself, as far as, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me pull it up. What are we supposed to do? Why is it that the Lord says to read his word, meditate on his word day and night, right? I'm going to read it for you right now. I'm going to read it for you right now. It's in Ephesians 6, chapter 6, verses 11 to 20. Put on the whole armor of God, that is the word of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, the word of God, hallelujah, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So even after you've, you know, you, and this is where the confidence and the assurance and the faith comes, because it's like, if you're doing your part as a child of God, as a follower of Christ, and you know, in your heart, you've done your due diligence, you know, Lord, I've done everything that I was supposed to do. I've meditated on your word day and night. I fasted, I've prayed, you know, I have not ceased in praying. I've been obedient. And if this is what's happening, then there's nothing else I can do. I'm going to be still. This gives you a confidence. So it's kind of like you maintain your faith, you maintain your righteousness, as opposed to knowing that, okay, well, I didn't meditate on the word there, and I, I didn't do, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. So now, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like you're, on, you're, you're shaky. It's kind of like, you know, you're, you're not on solid ground, right? So that's the whole point of, of, again, just being intentional about what you do, especially when it comes to the word of God, right? Stand therefore having your loins gird, gird about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, I want you to hear these key words, truth, peace, faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation, salvation, another key word, and a sword of the spirit, another key word, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, hallelujah, for when I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So again, everything, that that you need to triumph and to be victorious in, in your in your life on this earth your spiritual walk your spiritual life your even your physical life is is here it's compacted in in, in here you know maybe one day i could come on a video do a video and unpack this, this this scripture but everything that we need essentially is in the word of god and so you should be laboring right we should be laboring in the word right we should be laboring and should i say value the word of god above all else because that is the only thing that has the ability to save us that's the only thing that has been proven to do what it says that it will do right not mommy not daddy not husband not wife not child not money not job not economy not education none of these things okay have proven themselves to be what they are when things happen and 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 that that is out of the control of these things these finite limited earthly things nothing you know understand what i'm saying at the end of the day the spirit has proven time and time again to be everlasting all powerful all knowing right and so again it takes you having to go through certain experiences to know exactly what's valid what's really who's really a, you know as they say who's really about that life like who, who, like seriously like and so you can stop playing with people and stop playing with situations and and 
begin to make unapologetic and uncompromising decisions decisions when it comes to protecting your faith, when it comes to protecting your peace, when it comes to be protecting the truth that you was once revealed, that's revealed in the word, when it comes to preserving your salvation, when it comes to um, the word and the time that you need to study God's word. You understand what I'm saying? So that you are built up in the spirit. Whatever it is that you need to do, do not be fearful of making these decisions because you you are afraid you may not have money to do certain things or you may you may lose out on certain relationships or this person may you know not like you anymore all of these different things you know that the spirit of god says all who have left all who have left mother house car you know basically mother house husband wife child car job you know add all the contemporary desires that you can add in that scripture car um mansion what else job money i don't know phone shoes i mean whatever you you value more than anything whatever you idolize all who have left that and more for the kingdom for me and the kingdom will receive a hundredfold in this lifetime and more and that's a promise that is the that is a promise that is not again they say or she say that's a promise and so how do you fulfill that promise how do you receive that promise it's through your obedience so yes i know that there's grace I know that there's favor and I know that, you know, I'm saying that, you know, uh, grace. Yeah, I know that there's grace, but there's also the requirement of your faith to meet God's word. In other words, there, it, there needs to be uh, a connection. There needs to be an interaction. There needs to be a union with your faith. That is your free will, your faith, your actions. Faith without works is dead. The works that you will have to do, it may not be backbreaking work. It may not be, you know, complex work. It may be a simple thing as write the book. It may be a simple thing as write down this unconventional business plan. It may be a simple thing as move to this location. It may be a simple thing as quit that job. <laughs> you know, you know, it may be a simple thing as, you know, um, read the word of God for hour, like for the next five, for, uh, read the word of God for hour for five days for the next three months. Simple things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be simple things like that. Not complex, arduous things that the world likes to inundate people with, which ultimately gets the person nowhere. It's just like a waste of time. And that's what I'm saying. God, he, he, he's so powerful that he can simplify things like that and get you some unforgettable breakthroughs. And so it's up to you. It's like, and you know, yes, the Lord is patient, loving and kind, but you know, and you know, it's still, it's always up to you. It's always up to you to, to receive that open door. I want to go back to what I was saying about the Lord. Yes, he's always patient. You know, he's patient, loving and kind. This seasonal healing that this man kept missing, right? The word talked about the angel of the Lord would come down to this pool of Bethesda, Bethsaida, or Bethsaida, and um, would, you know, stir up the pool and, you know, anoint the pool, I guess, so that people who come into that pool for that particular season would be healed. So, in other words, you know, it's it's like, you know, uh, what was I, gonna, I was going to say something. In other words, it's it's... You have the, the, the seasonal healings or the seasonal rainings that the Spirit of God does just because he's God and he loves his world. He loves creation. And, you know, as the word said, God so loved the world, so greatly loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. One of the, the versions says so greatly, I believe, that he gave his only begotten son. So God, you know, he, he does what he does as far as generosity and compassion and, and kindness. But, you know, there is also the opportunity for us to maybe not as much as God, because I don't think, I'm not sure if it's possible, maybe it is, but if we were to allocate and appropriate the same love and loyalty and dedication and, and consistency and, and, and forgiveness that the Spirit of God applies to us, if we were to return that to the Spirit of God, as opposed to returning it to relation, human relationships, you guys know what I'm talking about. If we were to use that time and energy and that effort towards God, even when things are not working out the way that we wanted to, but we just stand on what God and who God has proven us 
who, who, who and what God has proven or has shown himself to be to, to, to us, right, as far as loyalty, love, and protection, and mercy, and generosity, and kindness, as opposed to, again, people that we've extended ourselves, I mean, literally prostituted ourselves in more ways than one, in relationships with people who, in truth, were our enemies, in relationships with people who, again, did not deserve our, you know, our time, truly, they didn't deserve our time, they didn't deserve our, our, our nothing about us, right? But we gave it because we desired love. We gave it because we understood love to be sacrificial. And it's kind of like, how? Can, why can't we allocate or appropriate this sacrificial love to the Spirit of God who gave it to us first? That's all I'm saying. And this applies to me too. You know, I, I always say, you know, I did in my, I talked about this in my other video. You know, sometimes I do weep because I know that I can always do better. I do know that God is so much more deserving of what I give, but yet still He's still so kind and merciful and, and gracious towards me and allows me to do this, allows me to, you know, be a light, allows me to be the vessel, you know what I'm saying, that His grace has allowed me to be. But imagine if I was to truly commit and, and truly use my time and resources to seek ye first the kingdom of God, how much more my life will change on top of what God has already freely given. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. You know, you want to be, you, you know, you want to set yourself apart, right? God is no respecter of persons. And the more that you do, the more that you, the more that you do, the more that, you, the more you seek, the more you will find. The more, you, the more you ask, the more, that, the more you will receive, right? And, and that's just the bottom line. It, that's, ju that's just it. And so what happens is when these, when your works, as private as it may be, but eventually your works become manifestations of fruitfulness, you know, good, bad, and ugly. But in this case, good, you know what I'm saying? You find people now feeling some type of way, especially people who may have known the Lord before you or may have been, you know, spiritual before you, but it's like you've not only caught up, but you have surpassed them in fruitfulness. You have surpassed them in power and authority. You have surpassed them in influence. And now the jealousy and the envy starts to come in. And it's like, you can't do nothing about these people. You have to leave them where they're at. And since they, you know that they know the Lord, you know that the Lord will take care of them and, you know, deal with them accordingly. But you cannot you cannot allow these people to have you despise your blessing or to make or to make you feel like it's too much blessings or is is you know God, you know you, you can't allow the scorns and the concerns or the or, or people's feelings to have you undermine or minimize or misuse God's blessings in his favor because God chose you when he came and he came into your life. He didn't ask permission. He didn't ask anybody permission to save you. He didn't ask anybody permission to bless you. He didn't ask anybody, you know what I'm saying, to come and get you. He came and snatched you up and, and set you on solid ground so that he may be glorified. And, and in the process, you experience a good and wonderful life. Any, if you allow anybody to take that from you or to have you believe anything outside of God's truth for your life, that's your fault. And that's when you come again, going back to the instructions, the foundational instructions is to meditate on this word day and night. Only then shall you be prosperous in, and successful in all that you do. This is what the Lord said to Joshua. And so it, it is the same thing that is required of us as his chosen ones, as his vessels, as the one whom he has prepared before the foundations of the world to be our, the modern day prophet, priest, king, lord, judge, lawyer, doctor, you know, pu uh, public official, you know, influencer, businessman, businesswoman, um, you know, whatever it is that God has created for you to do to be influential in the sphere of influence that he has established for you to be influential in, you need to know who you are and you need to sustain that, you know, according to God's directions and foundationally it's, it's, it has always been hearken on to my voice. In other words, read my word so you can know my voice. My sheep know my voice. Meditate on my word day and night. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And if you if you notice, I'm I'm contrasting Old Testament and New Testament commandments, which even though expressed differently, ultimately comes to the same conclusion. It's God first, right? And then through Him, everything else flows accordingly. And that's just it, y'all. And so that's 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 the equation. It's not al it's not algebra. It's, it's it's simpler than algebra. It's more like one plus one equals two, and that's just it. Like, and it's either you get on board or you continue with 
where you're at and what you've been dealing with. If you like where you're at, if you like where you're at right now, okay, that's fine. Um, it's not going to stop God from, you know, doing what needs to be done as far as anything else. You know, whoever he needs to save or whatever transformation or healing that he needs in someone's life. You not taking up your bed and walk is not going to hinder the plans of God, you know what I'm saying, or do anything that um, he's not able to do with a rock or with a donkey. You understand what I'm saying? So don't, you know, we while we're grateful and we understand the, the, the joy of being chosen and anointed and, and God's grace, let's not get it twisted about, you know, at the end of the day that even with our calling, we are to serve others. We are to, and in our service to others, it's essentially us being obedient to the call of God in our life. So with that being said, y'all, yeah, uh, be blessed. And I'm going to come on maybe tomorrow. God willing with another teaching. I am Corwin L. Gilliams, I King Amongst Kings, life coach, uh, encourager, uh, teacher of the word of God, obviously. Um, glory to him for, you know, again, empowering me and, you know, opening the scriptures to me to be able to communicate and teach the scriptures because that's a gift. You understand what I'm saying? That's a privilege. That is not something that anyone can do. You know, the Bible would be, for many people, words on a paper. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I've heard it to be in the way some people describe the word of God. It's just like, okay, you have not had the revelation that as as far as Father God opening your heart to receive his living word for what it is. You clearly, you know, for whatever reason, um, you, ju you just don't have that insight. And so certain people, you know, you can't really argue with them or have any type of righteous conversation when it comes to the word of God and the validity of the word of God, regardless of who it was written by, regardless of the versions, the word, the word of God is the word of God and he preserves his word. And for those who want to know what truth is, you ask the Lord and he will reveal to you truth. He will reveal to you the books that are not even in the canonical version of the Bible. He will reveal to you all the hidden places and all the hidden things that man and the pride of man has tried to hide or just quote unquote destroy. But the spirit of God has preserved and will continue to preserve for his remnants, remnants who desire to know him increasingly. Right? So with that being said, beautiful people, thank you again for watching and talk to you guys soon. I'm out. Peace.